Take three! Ugh, this camp, this freaking webcam. Fuck, my laptop sucks dick. I digress. Alright, once again, welcome everybody to another edition of... A Boring. A Boring, yeah. Welcome to Kill O Demon 669. I'm your host, Peter Gilmore. Say hi, Rosa. No, what? Sixty-six. Six, six, six! The number of the beast! You were gonna buy it. Anyway. As always, we're unscripted, me and Rosa. So. Once again, welcome to Kill Demon 669. I'm your host, Peter Gilmore. And thank you all for watching. Make sure you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below. And you know all the gist. Subscribe to my other channels down below. Follow me on Facebook. And, well, friend me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. All the stuff down in the description box. And that's all I gotta say about that. So, very quickly, it is time, once again, for your late night, Monday night, <sighs> review for January the 19th, 2015, as the go-home show before the Royal Rumble this Sunday, live on Don't Know Me Network for that low, low price of... What's that low, low price again? I don't know. I have my own trouble. Nah, I don't know what it is. That's 9 99 So... So, tonight was Raw Reunion, so we got, you know, we got Hulk Hogan, brother, Woo! Ric Flair, HBK, the NWO, Hall, Nash, and X-Pac. That was pretty nice. And we, we have Booker T, of course, too. Um, so it was pretty nice, and I thought we were going to have more, you know, reunion guys there, but I guess they didn't show up. Or whatever. But tonight's show was pretty damn good. Uh, let me just get my notes here. My notes are going crazy here. <laughs> so, we start off the night with a Paul Heyman promo and Brock, with Brock Lesnar. So, Heyman begins to introduce himself, but Lesnar takes the mic and he says, I'm here to fight, and he tells Seth Rollins to get his ass out here for what he did last week, like curb stomping him. Um, so, Lesnar says, when he shows up, it's business time, baby. Is that the same thing when he does in um, the bedroom with Sable? Business time? Hmm. So, he says Rollins has about 10 seconds to get his Weasley ass out here. So the fans start, ch start counting down from 10. Rollins doesn't show up. And then Les is like, yep, that's what I thought. So Triple H's music hits, and he comes out by himself. And we get a uh, clip from last week with uh, what happened at the contract signing. So Triple H comes in the ring. He understands. He tells, uh, excuse me, he tells, Le yeah, he tells Lesnar that he understands the curve stomp embarrassed him last week, but said that he would have done the same thing if he had the opportunity. And he brings up Lesnar hitting the suplex first, and he's just, they all calm down, go backstage, have a big steak, and then he and Heyman can discuss everything like businessmen. So Lesnar then asks Triple H if he's here to fix this or fight. So the crowd goes nuts because, of, you know, a little teaser to maybe Brock versus uh, Triple H 3. But that's not going to happen. Uh, and Heyman tries to calm Lesnar down, saying Triple H pays the bills. And then Stephanie comes out with the Big Show and Kane, saying that a cool heads need to prevail here. This isn't what Brock wants to be doing right now. So they enter the ring with and face off with Lesnar and Heyman. Lesnar and Heyman back up against the ropes near the ramp. And then Stephanie says that she's not trying to make Brock defensive. And then Seth Rollins and JJ Security appear on the big screen. The fans are booing, of course. Rollins then says Lesnar is always two steps behind him. Uh, he tells Lesnar to relax because he will get a shot right before Rollins takes the title at the Royal Rumble. And then Heyman interrupts and says, Hey, big men are talking here. Adults are talking here, fool. So he tells... Okay, so he tells the authority uh, to get their puppy on the on the leash before Lesnar fixes it on his own and leaves bodies laying around. Yeah. So Heyman then says that he has a spoiler for Sunday, and it's Lesnar still being the reigning, the fending. John Cena comes out to ruin the segment again with his little blue fucking t-shirt. I guess we can call him Blue Cena now, because, you know, he looks like Aquaman. With that fucking aqua teal, I don't know what color it is. You know, sooner or later it'll be coming out when well, we came out in white. 
you know, come out with stupid other colors, I don't care. So, anyway. Uh, so he talks on the ramp and says they're all going to settle this on Sunday, but he only came out to talk to the authority. And he brings up that they asked him to join a while back, and then they came up with a plan to destroy him. And he tells the authority to keep it up because everything they say or do and do lights a fire under him like never before. And he's going to take that fire to the Royal Rumble and beat Rollins and Lesnar. Then declare that the champ is here! Who cares? Uh, and he says he would do anything to get Eric Rowan, Ryback, and Dolph Ziggler back. He says the authority has no fire anymore, just ashes. Then he calls them ash holes. And he, go, and he goes to leave. But uh, Stephanie cuts his music off and says this is the turning point in Cena's career because he used to be the guy that always won, but that's not who he is anymore. And she says that he's the man who lied to every fan by bringing the authority back and says Cena can make all the corny jokes he wants, but they are here because of him. And he's responsible for Ryback, Ziggler, and Rowan getting, getting fired and losing their livelihoods. And Stephanie says nobody wants to cheer Cena anymore or see him win the at the Royal Rumble because he's not the man he used to be. And then Rollins calls Cena a loser from the big screen. And he rips on Cena some more and says Cena will fail again this Sunday. And everyone knows Cena's a failure except for John Cena himself. And if there's one thing that he, that himself and Lesnar can agree on, it's the fact that John Cena's time is up. And he says Cena should take himself out of the match at the Royal Rumble and just walk away. So Cena then says, like, he starts poking fun at Rollins with that, that stomach up with his words, idiots. And he threatens to come to the back and beat Rollins up, which he didn't. Uh, then he talks about respect and says when he beats Rollins and Lesnar on Sunday, people don't have to like him, but they sure have to respect him. So he proposes that if he wins at the Royal Rumble, the authority must give Ryback, Ziggler, and Rowan their jobs back. But Triple H is like, yeah, we gave you that opportunity last week, and you fucked it up. So he proposes that if Cena wins his match tonight, they get their jobs back. But if Cena loses, he's out of the title match at, at the Royal Rumble on Sunday. Ha <laughs> ha. So Cena doesn't look so sure about this, and Stephanie's like, are you really, are you really willing to do anything and everything New power to get them back, or you're just all talk. So Cena goes to speak, but Triple H interrupts him again, leaving the decision up to the fans on the WWE app, and says that the, the WWE Universe is going to find out what they really think of Cena. So they leave, and that's the end of the segment. So it was pretty damn good, so I give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright, after that we go to Cole, Booker T, sucker! And JBL, they hyped the WWE app, saying it's been downloaded over 15 million times, and we still don't give a flying fuck about it. Alright, then we get the match number one, Bray Wyatt taking on Daniel Bryan. Eh, this match wasn't that bad. Pretty much back and forth match. Uh, Kane came out to uh, the ring with his little suit and tie. You know, to watch the match, you know, I don't know why he's, he's there with this whole fucking Bryan Kane shit again. Come on! Fuck that. So, uh, like I said, pretty much back and forth match. Bray Wyatt was going to control for most of it. Uh, he kept control, I think, the clothesline. Brian hands, lands hard and rolls to the floor. And um, he brings uh, Brian back in. Uh, Brian runs the ropes, nails Bray Wyatt. He uh, gets builds up some momentum, hits the big drop kick in the corner. Then some kicks in the corner. Uh, climbs up, hits the Hurricanrana for two. Then he hits more kicks. He goes for the roundhouse kick. But as always, he always misses it. And, um... Uh, Wyatt ducked the roundhouse kick, sending Brian to the floor. Uh, he, actually, he went to the floor. Brian then runs the ropes, hits the suicide dive, which you should not be doing anymore, uh, to the floor. Then Brian rolls Wyatt back in the ring. Kane uh, pulls Brian off the apron while the referee's distracted. And then uh, as Brian is thrown back in, Bray Wyatt throws him in, into the turnbuckle face first. Ouch. And then he hits Sister Abigail for the win. So Bray Wyatt wins kind of cheap. Thanks to Kane. So I get the match 3.25 out of 5 stars. Afterwards, we go to replays, and uh, Kane's in the ring clapping. Yay, look what I did. And then he takes Brian, choke slams him, and he starts mount mounting him with uh, rights and lefts while the referees are trying to get him off. Kane then stands up, loosens up his tie because it's too tight on his ugly face, and then he punches him some more. What is the point? What is the point? 
of this whole thing with Kane and Daniel Bryan. Nobody fucking cares. Jesus. Rosa don't care either, right? So, that is what it was. All right, then we find out that voting is going to be open later for the WWE app, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then still to come later, a Royal Rumble panel with Hulk Hogan, brother, Ric Flair, and the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. So that should be fun. So, uh, after that, we come, we go to the back, Triple H is backstage on the phone, probably talking to Vince. Uh, then we see Scott Hall and Kevin Ash walk in with their NWO t-shirts, and they hug because they're part of the clique. And, um, Nash tells Triple H to drop the suit and, um, go hang out with them tonight. And then Shawn Michaels comes into another big pop. So he talks about the Legends panel and he's about to do, and like the Outsiders, he rips on a Triple H's suit. And he calls Triple H Vince Jr. <laughs> so Triple H pokes fun at HBK's Remington t-shirt. And then uh, x pac comes in doing crotch chops, but it's just Damien Sandow dressed up like, like x pac So I guess you can call him d pac Did you say what I think you said? d pac what do you think I said? Do you want, can I give you a Z-Pak? <laughs> so, uh, the real Sean Waltman, X-Pak, comes in, and Sano acts as his stunt double. So Waltman's like, you're hired. <laughs> so Miz comes in and tells Sano to change because you're my stunt double, dude. So then Nash, like, t looks at Triple H and says, what kind of show do you run here, dude? And Triple H just drops his head and he says he's ashamed. <laughs> This is a pretty funny segment, so I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. All right, after that, we see uh, John Cena with Renee Young. I don't know. Um, after that is the Royal Rumble panel. Uh, Byron Saxon is moderating it, and he asked them about the WWE app on um, vote on John Cena, if he should put his title shot on the line to get the Ryback, Ziggler, and Rowan the jobs back. So, HBK says yes, Flair says no, Hogan, as always, the big Cena suck-up that he is, says yes, brother. So, uh, Byron Sack asked Flair about the 90, 1992 Royal Rumble, where Flair came in at number one and won the WWF title. So, Flair gets a big pop for mentioning, what you mean, Randy Savage? Ooh, yeah. Big Flair, do you remember WrestleMania 8? Dude. <laughs> Gotta love Randy Savage. Raining elbows down from heaven. Ain't that right, Elizabeth? Duh. That's right, Randy. Why isn't Miss Elizabeth in the Hall of Fame? Dude, I'm hate you, Pete. Why? I'm never buying these pieces again. Why? I found over ten rappers on the house. Oh. Oh, eat a dick. Anyway. Sorry. Like I said, this show is unscripted. So. Sorry, Jeff. You don't get a script for this one. <laughs> So, uh, where was I? Taking back. No! My Twizzlers! No, it's mine! 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 So, Flair says that it was the greatest night of his life. It was career, actually. And he says it's nothing like winning the Royal Rumble. So, he asks HBK about what the Royal Rumble means to him, and HBK says that there'll be no re Mr. WrestleMania without the Royal Rumble. Then he, then he goes to Hogan... And he says Hogan is one of the superstars who helped elevate the Royal Rumble. He did. I don't remember that. Uh, and I'm um, asking about his, his about Royal Rumble memories. Hogan talks about how tough the competition was in the Royal Rumble. So AVK predicts Bray Wyatt will win this year's match. He says Wyatt may be whacked out, but he's very talented and has the focus that can take him the distance. So Hogan's like, nah, he ain't going to win. And HBK gets all pissed off. And he's like, why are you always pushing me? Why are you always kneeling? Why do we have to disagree? Then he brings up uh, SummerSlam 2005 and says, let's do it again, dude. So Hogan stands up and they're kind of like teasing that they might fight, but it's all a big joke. And Hogan predicts Daniel Bryan's going to win. And then Flair says that Dean Ambrose will win. So then the music of the the big slow hits and he comes out to booze and the fans chant, you sold out. And Fisher says that I did it for the rock. No, he did it for his family. Hogan tells Big Show that the fans don't want him out here. And Big Show tells Hogan to shut up because it's no longer his time. And he says Hogan, Flair, and HBK are all jealous of him. I don't think so. Um, then he gets in Hogan's face reminds him that he beat B. 
beat him for the WCW World Title in his debut. Uh, he took he took Flair out when he was in WCW, and he says Flair hates it and he eats him up inside. And so, and Big Show says HBK fizzled out when he came on the scene. I don't think so. Uh, and he calls him three washed up has-beens, begging for a little attention from the fans. And now he's ashamed to be in the same ring as them. So Big Show says he's going to win the Royal Rumble because there's nobody who can throw a giant like him over the top rope. <coughs> Roman Reigns. Uh, uh, they show X them to leave the ring and go back to the old folks' home. And uh, then he threatens them if they don't leave. Then Flair asks ask, uh, Big Show if he's done. He takes his jacket off. He's all pissed off. And he takes his Rolex watch off. He starts chopping the Big Show. And it's not affecting him. He punches him several times before doing the Ric Flair strut. And he just walks into a knockout punch for his trolls. The fans are boring as HBK and Hogan check, check up on him. And um, Big Show says this is all the fans' fault. And then Roman Reigns comes out. Thankfully, he didn't cut a promo. Uh, Big Show tells Reigns to get out of the ring before something bad happens to him. So they come face to face, and Big Show tells him to get out. Reigns says, Reigns says punches him. Um, then he dodges the knockout punch, blocks a choke slam. Uh, he starts coming back, sends Big Show with the top rope, and Big Show retreats up the ramp as the fans go nuts for him, and his music hits. So then we see Booker T sit back down from checking on Flair, and then HBK and Hogan lead the way as officials help Flair to the uh, back. What do you want? Snook. Snook. So that was it. So, pretty decent segment. You know, just, I think it was just more hype for the Royal Rumble itself. Uh... And, um, I guess, you know, you have a growing freaking Big Show Roman Reigns thing. I really don't care. I just hope Roman Reigns doesn't win the Rumble. I really don't. I'll get to that, uh, TGC 103 this Saturday when I do my Royal Rumble prediction. So, that was it. So, I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. All right, from there, we see Cena backstage with Renee Young. And we have the WWE app results and 65%. Though I thought it was 85. I might be wrong. Voted for Cena to wrestle the match and put his title shot on the line to get get uh, Ryback, Rowan, and Ziggler the jobs back. And Cena says he wants to fight. He wants to match. And tonight we will realize that the champ is here. Nobody gives a fuck. So I get that three out of five stars. All right, match number two: Dean Ambrose taking on Bad News Wade Barrett. And I'm afraid I got some bad news for you. So. This match was it was okay. Uh, pretty much back and forth match. Um, Barrett hits hits a running uh, boot to the face of Dean Ambrose. Gets a two count. Ambrose ends up kicking Barrett on, off the apron. But Barrett comes back. Um, and Ambrose fought back, um, but misses a splash in the corner. Uh, Barrett wails away and hits a big knee to the gut for a two count. And um, Barrett was in control again. Then Ambrose makes a comeback. Hits a nice bulldog. Uh, he hits the chops on the rope. And then he runs, and his knees, and his knee goes out. So he, you know, I guess still selling that knee injury that he got from the ambulance match way up with uh, Bray Wyatt. So Barry gets another roll up for two. Ambulance comes back off the rope, hits the slingshot clothesline, but his leg is still messed up. Then Ambulance goes to the top, but Barry crotches him. He goes for the bull hammer, but it's blocked. Um, he looks for wasteland, but Ambulance turns it into dirty deeds for the win. So finally, Team Ambulance gets a fucking win. How long has it been since his last win? Yeah, a long time. So, match is okay. I give it three out of five stars. So I guess Dean Ambrose is now going to get an Intercontinental title shot soon. He did pin the champion. So, it is what it is. All right. So, we go to commercial. We come back. We see the Dallas, Cowboy, ca bleh, 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 the Dallas Cowboys at ringside watching the show. No one cares. Then we get a Royal Rumble video package. You know, hype in the pay-per-view. And then... um. We get the match number three, Big E of the New Day, and Kofi, Kofi Kingston <laughs> taking on Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, the master of the universe. Uh, Natalia's on the outside. She's dancing with Adam Rose and the Rosebuds. I don't know why the, these people all joined up together. I just don't know why. This match kind of was boring. It sucked. Uh, but uh, the New Day was in control. Then Kobe comes in, takes control of Kid until uh, Adam Rose provides a distraction as Cesaro uh, hits a uh, uppercut from the apron and he tags himself in. Uh, and then Cesaro and Kid 
you know, work work on Kofi. They hit the hit the KRS one, you know, the big swing into the into the short drop kick. Chris Hero must be pissed right now. Uh, and then Tyson Kid comes in, he works on Kofi. Cesaro comes back in, hits a big shot to the kidney and an uppercut on Kofi, and then he knocks uh, B off the apron, does a Cesaro swing, and then Kid tags in. You know, they do a chaos one again. And uh, Biggie breaks up the pin. Cesaro comes back with forearms on Kofi. Kofi fights back with kicks in the corner, but Cesaro blocks the tag. And um, Kid gets knocked off the apron by accident. Well, not by accident, because Kofi knocked him off. And then Kofi rolls up Cesaro out of nowhere for a cheap win. So, they win. I don't care, because the New Day sucks. And so does Adam Rose. So, I get the match two and a half out of five stars. Afterwards, Adam Rose taunts the New Day from the ring as... They were dancing with them. I didn't, didn't care. And that was it. So, like I said, two and a half out of five stars. Don't care. All right. So we go into commercial. We come back with the N-W-O. So Hall, Nash, and x pac come out to a nice pop. Hall gets on the mic. He goes, hey, yo. And issues a survey to see who's here to see the N-W-O. So then Nash gets on the mic and says that the NWO created the Monday Night Wars and he takes and they take credit for, for mo- most of them, the top stars. He says that um, he has an ego but jokes that the NWO is responsible for everything great that ever everything great that was ever created. Okay. So Walt, uh, X-Rock gets on the mic but the but uh the Ascension comes out, Connor and Victor. I was like, oh great. And you could tell JBL was not I'm not pleased because <laughs> he hates he hates them. Vince hates them. I don't know why Triple H is high on these guys. They suck. They're facing jobbers. When are they gonna face real talent? That's all I I say. So Victor uh, gets on the mic. He welcomes them to the show. He says it's the Wolf Pack. Oh. And uh, but all the ascension sees is three old dogs begging to be put out of their misery. And then Connor says they're the two to do it. And then the fans get you suck. And Nash is like, <laughs> so Connor says they were born and bred to rip and shred. Nice, nice rhyme there, doofus. And then Victor says no team from the past, present, or the future is better than the Ascension. I care, I care to differ with that one. And it, it, this is even worse. He says especially no team from WCW. That's so kind of a rip off on a bunch of teams. Uh, the Steiners, all them Heat, many great tag teams that held the tag team titles. Yeah. So. And then, uh, Connor said it's their time to rise and welcomes the NWO to the wastelands. So then the fans chant for the NWO. Hall fl- goes, hey, Chico. Throws his toothpick at, uh, uh, what do you, what do you throw that? At Connor's face and they all are ready for a fight. And then JBL gets out of his chair and he takes off his coat as the fans are going nuts. And then he rips, he, he basically cut a shoot promo on them for having the audacity to come out in front of Legends. And he says, you know, I had a feeling this might happen, so I made a phone call, and the fans are going, I know where this is going. So he t- rips off his shirt, revealing an APA t-shirt, and the fans are going completely berserk as Ron Simmons comes out. Damn! To a humongous pop. The fans are chained for, for them, and they hug and hit the ring. But before that, they can fight the Ascension. Uh, more music hits, and DX come. well, the Road Dog and... Billy Gunn come out, the New Age Outlaws, as I call them, the Old Age Outlaws. So, Road Dog says, this looks like an old school party, and if you can't have an old school party like an old school party, because an old school party don't stop. So he knocks the Ascension, and, um, you know, he says, he says, we got a bunch of thoroughbreds, and some racehorses, but who bought the jackasses? So he knocks them, and then everybody attacks the Ascension. Uh, Billy Gunn and Road Dog beat the crap out of Conor and Victor in the corner. As uh, the NWO and uh, and APA look on, uh, then Connor gets sent to the floor. JBL then raises up his arm and he hits a big clothesline from hell on Victor. I thought he couldn't wrestle anymore, but he looks pretty damn well shaped. So then the NWO music hits as all that you like and celebrate. So it was a damn good promo. Now great to see the NWO look. Hall looks great. You know X Pac. You know kind of looks. You know he's still on something. You know, it's great to see the the uh, New Age Outlaws, and very great to see the APA back in back in town. So 
love this segment, so I gave it four out of five stars. I'm being generous. I don't give a fuck. All right. Then we go to commercial. We see the authority backstage, Triple H and Stephanie. Triple H says it's time to find out who John Cena will face tonight. And then Stephanie calls him a drum roll. And then some guy, probably an indie wrestler, I thought it was like he was doing the Rowdy Piper thing, right? So he does the little drum roll. And then Triple H says, it's going to be Seth Rollins. And then the drum roll stops like, what are you doing? We didn't tell you to stop. And he says, Big Show. I did not tell you to stop. And then Kane. And then the, the drum, you know, the drummers didn't stop this time. And then they start hassling the drummer. And then he fires him. Which is pretty funny. And then Stephanie said that Triple H and her will be at ringside to watch the match. And then um, some other guy comes in. And we can see the demise of Cena. And then some guy does taps on the trumpet in their face. And they just walk off. And that was it. So I gave it three out of five stars. All right. We go back to the announcer's desk uh, table. We see JB also wearing his APA shirt. But then we see, we pan off to see the Bella Sloss, I mean the Bella Twins at ringside. And anybody knows that that uh, we can see Nikki's titties? And then she was kind of flirting with J- JBL. JBL's a married man, Nikki. So anyway, they, they, they're at ringside for commentary on our fourth match tonight. Paige and Natalia taking on Summer and Alicia Fox. Didn't give a shit about this match. Typical Divas match. Uh, Paige wins with the uh, with the Scorpion crosslock on Alicia Fox. So they get the win by submission. And uh, we find out during the match that these uh, there's going to be Paige and Natalia taking on the Bella Sl- both sluts at the Royal Rumble, and nobody's going to be able to fly the fuck about. Uh, and that's it. So, after the match, they save each other each other down, and we find out that the match is on Sunday. So blah, blah, blah. Also on Sunday, on the kickoff show, it's going to be the New Day! Taking on Adam Rose, Tyson Kidd, and Cesaro in the elimination match that nobody's going to watch, and nobody's going to give a fuck about. So, that's it. Alright, match number five, R-Truth taking on Alexander. Lucif. Lucif slash la pussy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so R-Truth comes out. He does his little fucking gay rap. And he says, every American is coming for Rusev in the Rumble on Sunday. And to get to the match, Truth tries to, you know, get the quick upper hand. But Rusev just is like, fuck you, R-Truth. Kick, hits him with the big kick. And then he locks in the accolade. And that's it. Match lasts like a minute and a half, two minutes. Waste of time. So I gave it two out of five stars. That was it. All right, then we go to the back. We see Brock Lesnar walk up on Seth Rollins and um, J&J Security. And Lesnar says he's not going to hurt Rollins tonight. But he hopes Rollins takes out Cena. And then Lesnar will handle Rollins on Sunday. So Lesnar walks off and Rollins is like, I think I just grabbed my pants. You know, so that was it. So we'll see what happens in the main event. So I gave it three out of five stars. All right, match number six, The Miz taking on Jey Uso again. Once again, this match sucked. Uh, we see a sidebar video, sidebar video, excuse me, from earlier of Miz talking about taking back the titles on Sunday. So there will be a uh, tag title match. Uso is taking on Miz and Sandow. And we don't care. I think the Usos will win anyway. And then the Essential will finally win the t- titles. And nobody will care either. So. Uh, this match wasn't anything. Uh, the end comes when Jay blocks the skull crushing finale. Miz runs into the ring post. Uh, then Jay goes up top, hits the big splash for the win. Whoop the freaking damn do. I give it two and a half out of five stars. Now is it. All right, then we get a video from earlier in the night with Hulk Hogan brother talking about John Cena's chances for, for later in the, for the main event. Hogan says that with everything against Cena, it can only get better. Yeah, more sucking up. And he calls Cena a fighter. And he says Cena will win the jobs back and go on to win the title at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Sorry, Hogan. So I get that three out of five stars. All right, then we get to the main event: John Cena taking on the Big Show, Seth Rollins, and Kane. This is an okay match. We see Triple H and Stephanie watching from ringside. Uh, the heels start working on Cena before Rollins comes in. He starts working on Cena for a two count as doing chance for Cena to continue. Rollins and stomps away and Cena in the corner. Cena comes back, hits. It's a big bulldog, and they keep up the attack on Cena. Actually, Cena counts Rollins, and it's a big bulldog. Uh, and then the the heels come come back on Cena. Kane comes in. Show gets the tag in next, and hits a big right hand to the gut. 
and he starts working on Cena. Cena ducks a shot in the corner. He tries to fight back. He scoops Big Show up, but Big Show falls on top of him <laughs> for a two count. Then he steps on Cena. Stephanie looks on, and Rollins comes in, and this basically controlling the whole match. And uh, uh, Big Show goes to the second row for a big splash. Cena rolls out of the ray, and um, Rollins comes off the top, but Cena counters that. Hits his usual five moves of bullshit. Then he hits the five knuckle shuffle. He goes for the AA, but uh, JJ security provides a distraction. Uh, more back and forth after Rollins roll up. Cena then ends up nailing the AA and Rollins gets a close two count as Kane pulls Cena out of the ring. They show Big Show spears Cena on the floor as Kane takes apart the steel steps. Then Triple H towards Cena at ringside, but Cena makes it in at the at count of nine. And as Kane's looking for the choke slam, he nails it for another two count. Rollins comes back in, waits for Cena to get up, and then we see the man called Sting appear on the big screen. The crowd's going nuts. And then Sting comes out to the stage and provides a distraction. This leads to Cena getting the win. I believe he got it by a roll up. Who cares? So Ziggler, Rowan, and Ryback get their jobs back. This was so predictable. Did you did you actually think Cena was not gonna win this match and not get his title shot? Yeah. So the match itself, I get 3.25 out of 5 stars. Afterwards, Triple H is throwing a fit back at ringside. So, um, he yells for Sting to come back, to come back and says he doesn't belong here. And he's all pissed that the fans start chanting for Sting. And then Brock Lesnar comes out, uh, with Heyman to a big pop. And then Lesnar hits the ring, takes down Rollins. He beats up Kane and Joe, hitting them with F5s. And Rollins takes off, running to the back as Lesnar looks on. And then Raw goes off the air with Lesnar. Pacing around, so decent, decent aftermath. You know, Sting gets his second. You know, this is his second of six uh, appearances. I think the next one will probably be somewhere after the Royal Rumble, and then I think he's probably gonna do a couple more after the Royal Rumble. Then I think the last one will probably be at WrestleMania, and then maybe another one after that. I don't know, but decent aftermath. I think now we're finally planting the seeds for. Triple H versus Sting for control of the WWE at WrestleMania. But we'll see what happens. So I give the answer three and a half out of five stars. But all in all, Raw Reunion for me gets a 7.25 out of 10 stars. Did very good. I think it was a good show to lean into the Royal Rumble. You know, we'll see what happens in the triple threat match with Brock Lesnar, Cena, and Rollins. Uh... We got the tag title match, nobody's gonna give a fuck about. The Divas tag match, nobody's gonna give a fuck about. And then we got the big one, the big Royal Rumble, where anything can happen. And we'll see who wins it. Could it be Daniel Bryan? Roman Reigns? Alexander? Rusev? Or Bray Wyatt? Or Dean Ambrose? Or somebody else? We're just gonna have to wait and see this Sunday live on pay per view or on the WWE Network for that stupid low price of $9.99. But I'm gonna watch it for free! So, I can care less on firstroad.eu. I don't care. Because I don't buy WWE pay-per-views anymore. Because I don't want to spend $55. I don't have that kind of money. But anyway, let me know your thoughts and your opinions on Raw. What you guys thought of it. If any questions, leave it down below. And I'll answer it in a future Q&A. Please send me in questions. Because I'm, I really want to, you know, give back to my subscribers. I want to hear from you guys. So, send me three questions down below. On this channel or any of my other channels. Or you can direct message me on, on Twitter. With your questions. And um, I'll answer them as quickly and as soon as possible. So that is my video. Thank you all for watching. I will be back Wednesday night with my NXT review. Friday with my TNA review. And then Saturday with my Royal Rumble predictions. And then Sunday on Demon of God 6 is 9 with my Royal Rumble review. And... Got a little change in that do, during the review. I'm not gonna tell you. Um, well, I'm gonna give you who came in each, like one through thirty. But I'm not gonna say like who got eliminated until the final four. So I'm not gonna mention all that. So when it gets to the final four, that's when I'm gonna, you know, you know, do my do my 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 analysis and my review and all that stuff. And if there's any surprise in uh, entrance during the Royal Rumble, I will mention it too. So, and then, you know, I'll mention that, and then when I get to the final four, I get to say what happens, and then when I get to the final two, and then the winner who goes on to the, the uh, goes on to WrestleMania to face the world champion, whoever that may be, I'll talk about that too. So, 
stay tuned, everybody. Lots of videos coming your way this week. So, like them, give them, a, give them a like, give them a thumbs up, thumbs down. We don't care. Hit the subscribe button on this channel. My other channels, all the links down below. Find me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. You know, the shtick. And that's pretty much it. So, thank you all for watching this video. I'm going to bed because I'm dead fucking tired. I got to go back to work tomorrow. going to make the money that you wish you had. So, that's it. So, roll tonight, 7.25 out of 10 stars. So, that's it. So, leave some questions down below or on Twitter, wherever. So, thank you all for watching. I'm Peter Gomez signing off. Have a great night, everybody, and a great week. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.